We've all seen radiant barriers in some form or another, but do radiant barriers actually work? In this video, we're separating fact from fiction. Let's get into it. So what exactly is a radiant barrier and why are they used? Well, a radiant barrier is something that has a high reflectivity with a low emissivity. Emissivity being the amount of heat or radiant energy that's emitted by the material or surface inwards. If you've ever heard the term low E windows, the E is referring to emissivity. And so the goal of a radiant barrier is to reflect solar radiation that has the potential to heat up the building. That's why we often see radiant barriers being specified in hot climates. And these radiant barriers generally take the form of a highly reflective foil facing. You'll sometimes see foil being being bonded to sheets of rigid insulation, OSB, bat insulation, drywall, and other materials. And so in simple terms, the intention is to reflect heat when the foil is facing the warm side. And so radiant barriers, when installed on the correct side of the assembly, can actually work relatively well in poorly insulated assemblies. However, we need to talk about a few misconceptions about radiant barriers and how to actually use them. First off, radiant barriers are intended to reflect radiant energy. It does not prevent heat transfer through convection or conduction. Convection is heat transfer from air or fluids. Conduction is heat transfer from one material to another. When radiant energy is transferred from one component and that component is touching another component, we now have conductive heat transfer. And so I have to emphasize how important this is to understanding radiant barriers. Now, when it comes to convection, radiant barriers can often be taped or sealed to create an air barrier, which helps to manage convective heat flow or bonded to rigid insulation to reduce conduction, but its function as a radiant barrier should not be confused with the other potential functions. So for a radiant barrier to work, we need an air gap between that reflective surface and the source of the radiant energy. Otherwise, we just have conductive heat transfer. If you're building in a hot climate, you need the foil facing outwards with a gap. It will not work if it's facing inwards. You also need to consider that the foil facing is a strong vapor retarder and will not permit drying in the direction of the foil. This means that it would be a pretty dumb idea to have a foil-faced OSB or a foil-faced underlayment with asphalt shingles in a hot climate. But believe it or not, this is in some local building codes in places like California. You want to use a ventilated roof covering with an air gap, or better yet, scrap the radiant barrier and specify a light-colored shingle, but the radiant barrier needs to be oriented to reflect the source of radiant energy. Radiant barriers also don't add any R-value, despite the dubious claims of certain product manufacturers. R-values, which are a measurement of thermal resistance, are primarily measured using conduction, and so if you want to prevent heat transfer, providing a thermal break with insulation is really the best option that makes the most sense, combined with an air barrier to prevent heat gain or heat loss from convection. Radiant barriers don't really do much in well-insulated assemblies. Radiant barriers also don't prevent the transmission of ultraviolet light, as they're designed to handle infrared radiation. So where do radiant barriers make sense? In hot climates, located on the outside of buildings, since that solar radiation has the potential to heat up and stress our building assemblies and components, with the reflective surface facing outwards, not inwards. This means either in the form of claddings, roof coverings, exterior rigid insulation, or fully adhered weather-resistive barrier products with a rain screen to provide an air gap. We also want to be conscious of the fact that radiant barriers are vapor barriers and will prevent drying. And so an assembly that's designed with the radiant barrier needs to address this. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.